Hey y'all, this is Timothy Jackson, a man about food with you today. Just going over a quick step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create the perfect cheese and charcuterie board. If you don't know what those are, they're basically a platter filled with meat, cheese, and a lot of great other things. And so, so excited to share this tutorial with you. Um, and so let's get started. I have already put, um, I don't know if you can see this just yet. I've already put on my board, my, my board here, this is a Lazy Susan. Um, four different types of cheeses. But before we get started with that, you do not need to use something this large. This would be perfect for an entertaining space. If you had several friends coming over after work or on the weekends or what have you, this would be perfect for this. This would serve a lot of people. I'm using this today. It's because I went kind of crazy in Trader Joe's and the, in other stores finding a lot of different things. And so I'm just going to put this together for you today. You could easily use a simple plate. I do that all the time. I love these for dinner. Um, and so I can make it for one. Um, and you can just really bump it up depending on, on how many people you're serving. And so you do not need to use something this large. You can do something as simple as um, I have another cutting board that you can see is much smaller. Um, I also have a cutting board that a friend of mine just got me for my 39th birthday that has a man about food on it so i uh, already used it once before i was going to use it for this video uh but i went kind of crazy on green so uh this is going to have to hold off to the next time so now that we have our board um you want to make sure that it is food safe um because we are going to be putting food directly on it so we need to make sure that it's food safe if you're not sure you can always easily just take you a layer of saran wrap, wax paper, parchment paper, uh, and, and just cover it if you are not sure. That way you, you're, you're making sure that uh, before you put any food on it, that it is food safe. Of course, I do know that this is, so uh, I am putting it directly on here. So uh, where can you find them? Again, like I said, you can get really, really fancy with the wood boards. You can find them. I've seen at, at Target, at Walmart. Uh, other stores, you can order them online. My friend got uh, the, the engraved one on Etsy. Um, again, you can use regular plates. You really can just use just about anything. Um, you know, right now, a lot of people are using uh, dinner drinks, like that you put drinks on. Um, it's circular, and so it holds things in, so it's perfect. But, so this is what we're starting with. Again, this is the board that I'm using. And so essentially the first thing that I always like to put on there first is my cheese. Always, it's just it's just generally the way that I always start. And so you may be asking yourself, what type of cheese do you usually use? Of course, there are thousands upon thousands of different types of cheeses out there. Um, generally, you go with a cow's milk cheese, uh, goat's milk cheese. Um, you can do blue cheese, um, different types of, of, of soft cheese, and I'll go over those in just a minute. Um, Again, you can just kind of let your mind go crazy. It's depending on also who you're making this for. If you know somebody that is just averse to blue cheese, don't put it on there. Um, that's the great thing about making these. You can make these completely customizable to what you want and what you like. Um, and so just to kind of go over what I have with you on my board already, I just have a, a block here of some Danish blue cheese, one of my personal favorites. Left of that, I just have a soft ripened brie cheese. To the left of that, coming on around the corner, we have some vanilla and cranberry goat cheese, which is one of my personal favorites. And then we, to, to round it off, we just have some manchego cheese, which is a Spanish sheep's milk cheese. There is one thing that I typically have on all of my boards, um, because it's generally the standard, and that's cheddar cheese. I thought I had some, but didn't buy any, so that's the reason why there's none on this board today. Um, but that's usually a go-to. I usually start with, with some type of cheddar. Um, and so, again, you can just go to the cheese counter. Aldi is a great place for finding little uh, bits of cheese. You don't need a whole lot. Trader Joe's is, is, is perfect for it. Um, I actually got all four of these cheeses from Trader Joe's. So, um, I know, again, like I said, Aldi. Um, and, and just kind of look in your store. Um, and so, that's where I start. The next thing, before I get to the meat, um, is I like to do my bone structure. And so it's all of my little bowls and, and things of that nature that I want to fill in. And so 
One thing that I am going to put right here in the middle is, I don't know if you can see this, but I was able to find some beautiful, fresh honeycomb. And so I am just going to set that right there and just let that be my, my, my center of the board. Something else I want to put on there is um, I always like something creamy. And so today I have just some Mediterranean style hummus, nothing that I made myself. That's another great tip about um, charcuterie boards. It's no cooking involved. And so I'm just going to literally put this right here in this bowl. And I'll just save that spoon for a little later so it won't be in my way right now. And so I'm just going to set the hummus over there. Okay? So I got that done. What else do I want to put on here? Well, I was in Whole Foods and found this red pepper jelly. Red pepper jelly is perfect for cheese. Cheese and fruit. It's spicy, it's sweet, um, and it's perfect for these type of, of applications. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set that right there. It loves brie cheese, by the way. So, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I have some smaller dishes. Oh, just a, a, a tip about cheese make sure especially for your cheese and your meat make sure you take your cheese out no later than 30 minutes before you're about to to begin working on this um some can even do longer the brie as it warms up it's just going to begin to ooze it just gets really 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 soft um and so one it makes it easier to cut but then two cheese is better at room temperature as, as you, i'm sure you know you want to do that also for your Italian meats. They just taste better just room temperature as opposed to really, really cold straight out of the refrigerator. So just take those out. They're going to be completely fine on your counter. Uh, it's not like you're leaving them for several days. Uh, but, but just make sure that you do that as a, as a point. I also have there um, one thing that I always have on my board um, is something pickled. And so I have some just regular plain black olives that I'm just going to set these on here. And then I was also able to find these caper berries. And so I'm just going to set them here too. And as you can see, this board, even though it is very large, is filling up really, really quickly. And so that's what we want. Also, just because you put it there does not mean it has to stay there. I will probably constantly be moving all of these while we're doing this. And so, uh, just want to keep that in mind. Something else that I have that's kind of bulky that I was able to find are these vine ripened cherry tomatoes. And they just add a pop of color. And again, see how, how I'm just moving things around to give me more room. Okay. Something else that I'm going to add. I have these slices of oranges that I'm just going to set right there. Okay, let's see, what are some other big items that I have? I also have just an English cucumber that I have just cut into slices. This is, this is nothing difficult.
Okay. So I got that. And as you can see, this board is filled up really, really quickly. Um, and I'm not part, you know, not, not taking any hardly any time on it. Next thing I want to do is I have this prosciutto. I'm going to put my meat on next. And so I just have here, I've already taken it out of the package. I don't know if you can see it. But it is just very thinly Italian ham. And so it's really, really good. And so I just have a block of it that I'm just going to set right here beside this brie. And so people can just kind of pick it up. Something else that I have. And again, see, I'm, I'm moving things again. Excuse me, let me wipe my hands off. There we go. Okay. Now I just have some uncured Genoa salami. These are larger salamis, sliced salamis rather. And so, and so what I'm just doing is sim simply just folding it in half. Nothing, nothing difficult. That's the great thing I love about charcuterie boards. This is nothing too difficult um, that, that anybody can put together. Okay. So, I'm done with that. Wipe my hands off. And again, moving these tomatoes around again. And then you'll start seeing as you do this and get more comfortable with it. As you do this, it creates natural pockets for you to put other things in. And so um, what you want to be mindful of is um, a, a couple of things. One color matters. Um, of course, we know when, when it looks good to our eye, we, we like it even more before we even taste it. And so, you eat with your eyes first. And so, as you can see, all of the different types of color that I have on here. Um, and I've not really done anything. I just sliced an orange. There you go. Big block of color. I rinsed off these tomatoes. Put them on there. Big red color. Um, you know, as you can see, these cucumbers. Again, rinse those off. Slice them up. Uh, the cable bears. Just took them out of the jar they were in. The olives out of the jar they were in. You're not really doing very much. But again, color does matter. Flavor matters. You want to make sure that you hit all of the senses. So whether it's sweet, salty, savory, um, all of those different flavors you want represented on your board. Texture is also important, and we'll get to that in just a, a few moments. Something that's creamy, I talked about the, the hummus earlier. Something that's crispy and crunchy, I'm going to put some crackers and breadsticks on here in just a few moments and so you want to make sure again you're feeding all of those different senses all of those different textures um, that that you want on your board i have one more meat that i'm going to put on here that i, I found at trader joe's that i actually snuck a bite last night um, i bought it from got it home from the store is this uh it's an uncured three pepper salami it has a kick <laughs> uh so if you like the kick this is for you. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to set these right here. Over here by the manchego. Okay. Next. I have some Italian salami. I know I'm on a salami kick. I know, I know, I know. And so I'm just going to, nope, not going to put it there. The reason why I didn't put it there is because the colors are too much alike. And so what I'm going to do, 
I'm just going to set these right here. And I have a couple of more that and I'm just using things. Nope, can't put it there because that prosciutto is that, it's that close to it. Tell you what, I'm just going to set it right here. Salami and blue cheese goes great together. And that's the great thing about this too. If you don't know if it pairs well towards something, try it. Um, you know, I mean, if you don't like it, you'll just know for next time. Let's see. What's next? What's next? I need to put some crackers on here. Again, um, you eat with your eye. I mean, of course you want the texture that I was just talking about just a few moments ago. These are just some mini crackers that I was able to find. Naturally, you want to put crackers where things are that are, are soft. That people like putting crackers next to. Cheese and crackers are, are match made in heaven. Um, and so... Okay, like I said earlier, I have some breadsticks. Okay, as you can see, we're, we're, we filled it in pretty pretty nicely. Well, you know, if we go back to where I was talking about the flavor, right? I said you need something salty. We have plenty of things salty and, and pickled from your, your pickled caper berries or your olives. You need something sweet. Uh, we have something with the honey. We're going to put a couple more things on here sweet in just a moment. We have something a little spicy. This pepper jelly is going to fit the bill. That spicy salami also. Um, and of course, salami by itself is, 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 is has a little spice in it. Um, you have something citrusy on here, of course, with, with your, your oranges. Um, and, and again, again, you're trying to, to feel all of those, those different points. So what you want to do also, um, and I think you just want to fill in. These are just blueberries that I'm putting on here. Just blueberries. I've already washed them. As you can see, I just have a little bowl. I've already washed fruit. That's something you want to do also as, as kind of a tip. Is you want to already have a lot of your stuff prepped. A lot of your stuff opened. You know, um, cheese is sliced. It makes it so much easier to do this. I remember the first time I, I first started doing this is I tried to open up everything and slice everything as I went, and it took me forever. Now I'm able to do these that are pretty large, and I'm able to do them pretty, pretty quickly. And I see a hole that I'm going to do something. Give me just a moment. I forgot to do this. There we go. I knew there was something that was missing. I got my grapes. Grapes are a great way to, to 
add color and add height too because um, you don't want everything flat that's the reason why i've constantly been moving these 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 tomatoes i want some height i want some interest what goes well with brie and prosciutto figs yes i found these black mission figs at trader joe's Uh, let's see. There's some blackberries. And again, this, this is not a hard, fast rule that you have to use everything that I am using on this platter. Um, these are just some of my personal favorites, uh, that I go to time and time again. Um, because I, I just, I know what I like. <laughs> uh, here's some raspberries that I'm just going to put right on top of these, these cucumbers. Ah, if some gets in there with the honey, so be it. Let's see. I have a couple more blackberries. Sure. Why not? Let's see. So all that's done. What else do I have? I always put something nuts. Now if someone has a nut allergy, naturally, leave it off. But these are just unsalted almonds. There you go. I also have Some banana chips. And one of my personal favorites. Fried cranberry. entertaining crackers straight from Kroger so uh, all of my platter is just about done don't know if you can see this I'm going to try my best to move it to where you can see it closer okay and again I'm going to go through this in just a moment exactly what this is now I'm about to decorate and you don't have to do this, but if you know me, you know this is what I do. So, this is just fresh thyme. Okay. This is fresh time. This is fresh rosemary that I'm putting on here. Again, if rosemary is too strong for you, don't put it on here. Um, again, <laughs> this is about your board. You know, um, this is about your senses. What looks good to you? Okay. 
Okay. And I have one more. And that's fresh sage. And what I like to do with sage, you can do this with, with basil. If you don't like sage and think that it should stay on, on Thanksgiving and not on your board, um, use basil. Basil is a great, great trick. And essentially all you're doing is just, again, providing another sense because I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. Just adding these herbs on here. And I got some new flowers yesterday. And I had some flowers left over. So, there we go. We're done. Took about 25 minutes or so. Um, and again, would have taken a lot longer had I been trying to open up all of this while, um, while on camera with you all. And so I'm just going to go briefly around the, the table, around the board rather, to let you know what everything is. These are the caper berries. This is the Italian dry salami. This is the Danish blue. Um, just got some rosemary on it, some uh, green seedless grapes. These are some mini, uh, let's see, what do they call it? Uh, roasted garlic mini artisan crackers. These are some black mission figs, and this is just some Mediterranean hummus with some blackberries. There's some prosciutto under there. This is some soft ripened brie. Again, some of that are dry, uh, Italian dry salami with some fresh thyme on the top, some unsalted uh, almonds, a green seedless cu cucumber, which is going down the middle here. There's some dried uh, cranberries under there with, of course, some fresh flowers. These are some raspberries, some blackberries that I mentioned, some more figs. There's some fresh honeycomb in here. Back over here, this is just some of that pepper jelly that I was talking about. Some fresh blueberries. There is also some uncured uh Genoa salami under here, under this Gerber daisy. It's just some uh, thin breadsticks under here. Over here, you just have some garnish with some sage, but you also have the uh, blueberry and vanilla. I'm sorry. Yes, blueberry and vanilla uh, goat cheese. Just some banana chips, some black uh, olives um, that are pitted. Again, some more crackers. These are just some uh, cherry tomatoes still on the vine. Um, you have you just a, a navel orange that just sliced. Some blueberries, again, more fresh flowers. These are just some butter entertaining crackers right here. Uh, the caper berries. Um, this is some of the three pepper salami that I talked about. And that gets you all the way around the board. Gets you all the way around the board. And I see right now, I'm going to stop. But normally when I do these, there's I don't see the board. But I'm just going to go on a stop today. So, um, this is just a, a, a quick cheese and charcuterie board. Um, again, make sure, uh, generally for one to, to different types of uh, cheese for about one to three people. Uh, three to five types for four to six people. As you can, like I told you earlier, this is easily could be, you know, a good number of people. Um, when you look at different meats, yes, I used a lot of salami today, but you can use pepperoni, mortadella, prosciutto, capicola. Um, it's kind of endless. Color matters, as you can see. Just have just about every color represented on the, on the color wheel, even black. Um, and so that's important. Texture is important. Um, again, from the, the crunchy, the crispy, the creamy, you want to make sure that, that you're touching on all those senses. Um, flavors are important. Make sure that it's sweet, salty, savory, um, that you, you're touching on all of that as well. And so, 
Um, again, just kind of let your imagination run wild. It has been my pleasure to go over this with you. I hope that you enjoy. Um, if you would, if you've taken, uh, if you've made a charcuterie and cheese board, put your pictures in, in the comments below. I want to see them. Um, and just make sure to, to tag me, uh, a man about home, a man about food, uh, Timothy Jackson. I'd love to be able to see them. So, again, thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's been a pleasure for me to be able to go through this tutorial with you. And I look forward to seeing your boards. And let's get cooking. Have a great one.